Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a beautiful opportunity that the Lord has granted us once again today. And uh, we're going to be glad in this day because that's the purpose of our Lord. You know, when you know, <laughs> when you know accurately, when you have a clear uh, knowledge, view of uh, what we are supposed to see, what we are supposed to know uh, concerning God, concerning our, ourselves, concerning life, you are automatically laid into the realm of uh, confidence. You know, there's no confidence without any reason. If you are confident and you don't know why you're confident, <laughs> then that's not confidence, that's assumption. And many people live on assumptions. You should have a reason why you're confident. You understand? Well, when you know God accurately, you get to know yourself accurately and you understand life accurately. You see, and uh, you will live a fulfilled life. Most and all the time, in fact, we miss out on something about God and that translates automatically in our shortcomings when it comes to our knowledge about ourselves and also the knowledge about life, right? The interpretation we have uh, of our situations, of our circumstances, and what we see, what we hear, it's not. It's not gonna be that interpretation that is uh, divine. When you have a wrong interpretation of, of things about life, you will suffer. And who is suffering? You suffer. And who is causing those sufferings? <laughs> you are the one causing those sufferings to yourself. You see what I mean? Now, understand this. In Acts chapter 14, 13 rather, verse uh, 34, we, we did see 33 where we, we read, God has fulfilled this for us, of their ch children, in that he has raised up Jesus, as, it, as it, it is also written in the second psalm. Now, what is written in the second psalm is that you are my son, today I have begotten you. Well, connecting the resurrection of Jesus with this psalm, and they are talking about the manifestation of Jesus Christ, who will come, appear on the earth, live, die, and by the time he resurrects, the, all the promises are fulfilled. There is no promise that was not fulfilled at the time of the resurrection of Jesus. And that's where we have now a problem, that most of the things which people say that, well, they are going to happen, they are going to happen. Well, the first question is, can you first assess and um, tell us what is not fulfilled, which he's planning to fulfill? And how much knowledge do you have concerning, um, concerning how much knowledge do you have concerning uh, fulfill the fulfilled ones what do you know so far that is fulfilled and what are you thinking that is not uh, fulfilled you, you see that, that that's the issue well you are my son today I have be begotten you and he says and that he raised him from the dead no more to return to con corruption he has spoken does but this is so unique, brothers and sisters. The gospel of grace is just deep. Well, it says, And that he raised him from the dead. He raised him from the dead. You understand? He raised him from the dead. No more to return to corruption. He has spoken thus. I will give you the sure masses of David. Now, notice here, he says that what he calls uh, resurrection when he was raised Jesus was raised 
what happened for the first time was resurrection. You see, many people don't realize that the things Jesus did, everything Jesus did was done by the fir- for the first time. For the first time, he was doing things for the first time. There's nothing, right, he was trying to imitate. In fact, the promises and the prophets were talking about the one who will come and be able to do things that nobody else has done. For instance, he will become the light of the world. When he was promised as the light of the world, nobody before had ever, uh, was referred to as the light of the world. He was the only one referred to as the light of the world. Now, the concern and the question is, how come that this one who was promised that was supposed to come, that means everything he did, he did it for the first time, if it was to die, his death was supposed to be a different kind of death. If it was to go on the cross, then the cross will, mean, will change the meaning. If he rises from the dead, the resurrection of Jesus Christ will be a different resurrection. You understand? If Jesus feeds people, he will feed people like nobody has ever done before. If he heals, it, it also means he's healing them for the first time. The kind of healing and the way he's doing it and why he's doing it is different. You see what I mean? So, we have to understand that when Jesus came on the earth, something new had come on the earth. No wonder he was the only one who was capable of fulfilling all that was promised by our forefathers. Now, what I want you to see, to look at or uh, focus on is this verse 34. It says, and that he raised him from the dead right now he then explains what this resurrection entails you know now he says no more to return to corruption he has spoken thus i repeat no more to return to corruption he has spoken thus so this uh, in this verse the idea of resurrection that is being said or been uh, revealed here is also interpreted or explained. He says, in that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken that. Well, so this is the first resurrection taking place. Now, you might wonder, how about, you know, uh, Lazarus who rose from the dead, Jesus himself uh, called him back to life in John chapter 11, how about uh, the other um, son of a widow that was in the city of Nine when he was taken to be buried and Jesus met them along the way and he touched the coffin and the, the son of that widow resurrected right away, you know, but imagine how that is very interesting imagine he touched the coffin and the child the son rose from the dead you know he was he was in that coffin being taken to be buried and he was the only son of that widow imagine she's a widow and she has this only son you can imagine the kind of pain jesus is wonderful jesus is wonderful every move he made was that unique and special you know now he says and that he raised him from the what from the dead now i'm saying now how about those ones that jesus rose from the dead you know and uh there's also another little girl that jesus christ gave life so that she come back from the dead you know so jesus did those miracles we also see paul uh, performing a miracle over the man called Utukas, Utukas, who uh, fell, fell from uh, the upper room and uh, fell down and died. And Paul went down and gave him life again, and he rose from the dead. He he came back to life. The Dorcas, this wonderful woman who used to help other women, who also uh, had a problem and died. But then after dying, she rose back from the dead by Peter. The Old Testament, we see Elijah performing a miracle of resurrection. We see also um, this wonderful man 
uh, Elisha also performing a miracle of resurrection. So basically, when you look into all this, you realize that the, prom the resurrection miracles are taking place already. But why is it that in this, in this case, nothing that, that there's nothing that has and was supposed to be compared to these, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? How possible is this, you know? How is it possible that nobody was able to what? To produce, to resurrect, to bring somebody back to life. Even Jesus, when he rose, he, he brought back to life Lazarus, it was not resurrection. It is called resuscitation. And resuscitation is different from resurrection. So what happened is that what happened to Jesus is far, far different from all those resurrections that you read in the Bible. That everything else was resuscitation. And what is the difference between resuscitation and resurrection? You see it in this chapter 13 verse 34. It says, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption he has spoken thus. So the difference between the resurrection of Jesus and the rest of all others was that there is no more to return to corruption. That means if he rose from the dead, he cannot die again. You see, whereas others who rose from the dead, they later died because we don't have um, any account, you know, uh, of them living eternally. But what we are seeing here is that when Jesus rose from the dead, the difference between the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of uh, the rest of the people is that the resurrection of Jesus means that once you resurrect that kind of resurrection, it is impossible for you to die, right? Whereas the rest of the resurrections, uh, resuscitations, you had, you could die again. Now, surprisingly, he's saying that Jesus rose from the dead. And what do you, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, there are things that are there. And that's why we say this is too good to be true. And this is also a factor when it comes to our, our life, our living eternally, that we have to understand the kind of resurrection that Jesus Christ established or brought forth. And this resurrection we're talking about is a resurrection from where we're not supposed, you know, which you're not supposed to die again. That means you cannot see corruption again. If you see corruption, that is not resurrection in the first place. It is resuscitation. That's why I was using the word and they gave them life and they come back to life. Eh? They, gave, they came back to, brought them back to life. But this is not bringing, you know, breathing into somebody who has, you know, collapsed and uh, lost his breath and, you know, and you pray and the breath comes back and that person resurrection. It is also uh, beyond, you know, only receiving back your life. No, it means that you become, you come back as a brand new person who never existed. You see, the miracle in the resurrection can only can also be seen in uh, the plant when you plant a seed, you know, and uh, or any any seed, you know, when it goes in the ground as a seed. Every time there's resurrection, resurrection is always coming with a greater beauty that is too much to compare to the seed. You understand? For instance, a seed of mango, a seed of uh, corn, any seed you sow. When you look at the seeds that produce certain fruits, a certain you know plants, and so on and so forth, you'll be shocked at those seeds and the uh, fruits they bear. So. You look at the fruit, which is the experience of resurrection, you know, because it has to die first and then uh, later rose, you know, money, germinate. And that is experience of resurrection. It's always far, far beyond in beauty and in shape. It's just amazing. Shalom, shalom.